Natasha, great to have you here on Outsiders. Been very keen to get you on. Um, it, it's a, it's a, let's first go to Iran and the attacks this morning on Israel before we get into the questions of, uh, that I'd like to put to you about Anwar and about Australia kind of flirting with recognising Palestine, this sort of thing. But just quickly, your thoughts on what is happening in Israel right now. Mm. It's very good to be with you. Firstly, may I extend my condolences to everyone who's been affected by the stabbing attack in in Sydney and and Bondi. Uh, I know we've been watching from the UK um, with great concern uh, those developments and certainly the those who have been injured um, and uh, and killed and their families. Um, what we've been seeing, of course, in the last few hours developing, I think, tells us two things. Uh, first, this is certainly Iran escalating uh, this issue into a regional conflict. Uh, but the second real significant takeaway is that the uh, Israeli defensive technology that has been on display, uh, certainly with respect to the first wave of drones and uh, ballistic missiles that we have seen uh, has proved itself to be extraordinary. Um, We're very familiar with the Iron Dome defensive missile system that deals with shorter range rockets. But what we have seen on display this evening, uh, by all accounts, has been the Arrow 2 and Arrow 3 programs as well. Uh, It seems as David's sling. Uh, And in terms of at least this first wave uh, of an extraordinary development, uh, Iran Uh, launching an attack uh, on Israeli sovereign territory itself, not using, of course, its proxies uh, that it has uh, over the last six months been utilising to attack Israel. Uh, Of course, Hezbollah uh, from Lebanon, um, Hamas from Gaza, uh, and also uh, more widely, we've been seeing the influence of the Houthis in Yemen. Um, This significant escalation uh, so far Uh, seems only to have caused uh, one casualty, a a tragedy, a a severely injured um, 10-year-old girl from the Bedouin community in the south. Uh, But so far, uh, it does seem that Israel is successfully repelling this attack with extraordinary technology uh, that we've seen on display. Now, Natasha, you're a lawyer um, and you've uh, looked in great depth into all the various uh, attacks on Israel, such as the south uh, African, you know, the, the uh, ICJ thing and all of that. But what I want to ask you about is Australia. And uh, the Australian government has refinanced ANWR. It has um, uh, it, it has taken a number of measures. It's called for or flirted with the idea of recognition of Palestine without any kind of, uh, you know, just go ahead and recognise Palestine. We've also seen Australia sending an envoy to investigate that uh, the tragic WCK aid workers' deaths. Now, you don't normally send envoys to investigate your allies. So give us your thoughts on what is Australia doing? What's your take on the Australian government? And what are they up to? Well, unfortunately, these steps um, are not Australia's alone. Uh, And I think it can very significantly be linked to the extreme escalation that we've seen uh, this evening. Um, this evening over here from London, I was yep. in the early hours of the morning at your end. Um, the uh, rhetoric that we have also seen coming out of the United States uh, seems that uh, liberal democracies are turning their back on Israel, despite the fact that Israel is very much fighting our war, uh, that in defence of liberal democracies and the values that we hold dear, both in Australia, uh, in the UK, in the US. Uh, And the increasing rhetoric that we have seen um, in support, uh, one may uh, say, of the uh, terrorist proxies that Iran has been deploying uh, is deeply concerning. And I think, I I certainly hear the arguments that many have been raising, that this is what has triggered uh, the Iranians to consider uh, such a an explosive escalation uh, to be uh, something that they would uh, undertake. Um, certainly the uh, investigation uh, into the uh, world central kitchen tragedy is something Israel um, launched very quickly. Uh, it conducted a, a an independent investigation in that the retired officers that were um, in charge of it were outside of the chain of command. And in that respect, in fact, Israel did something that I don't think we've seen other militaries uh, conduct. Um, When I think about recent 
strikes perhaps conducted by the US, um, most notably uh, that in 2021 in Kabul, uh, a drone strike which killed an aid worker and his family. Uh, The response by the Americans was very, very different to the immediate uh, apology that we had from Israel, the acknowledgement of responsibility and uh, a decided effort to learn from mistakes. Uh, And that is, of course, testament to the fact that Israel does not target civilians, uh, and so many military and legal experts, some of them with experience on the ground, um, have repeatedly said that Israel goes far above the requirements of international law and, in fact, the practices of most other law-abiding armies around the world in ensuring that civilians and aid workers uh, and other non-military targets uh, are kept safe uh, to the utmost of its ability. Uh, And the measures that are adopted. Yes. Um, Your group provides legal support to victims of anti-Semitism. It's one thing to deal with individuals who who may be anti-Semitic, but how do you deal with institutional anti-Semitism? Because we actually are seeing that uh, not just at universities, but you could argue from segments of the media, the BBC, and Mm -hmm. even segments of the Democrats with, with, with the squad and, and, and a virulently anti-Israel sentiment there. So it, h- how do you deal with, with that rise? Yes, and unfortunately also the international organisations, including UNRWA uh, and other UN bodies, as, as um, uh, have already been mentioned. Uh, the difficulty here, I think, is in identifying and, and being clear Uh, when we identify the modern manifestation of anti-Semitism as it uh, targets the Jewish state. Uh, And we see this uh, manifested in modern blood libels uh, and falsehoods that are propagated against Israel. I'm sorry to say, even in uh, otherwise uh, respected and respectable international institutions and across increasingly international legal institutions. Mm. And one of the roles uh, that UK Lawyers for Israel Charitable Trust uh, embraces in addition to providing providing support for victims of anti-Semitism is to try and educate on these issues, especially as far as international law is concerned. Uh, Because so uh, often, especially in the international legal arena, we're seeing an abuse of law, um, an inversion of the real uh, international law uh, and a misapplication of it. Uh, And that is a threat, I would say, not just to Israel, um, as we have been seeing develop over the last six months, including in the attacks um, by South Africa at the International Court of Justice. It seems very much on behalf of uh, the internationally prescribed terrorist organization Hamas, but also um, the impact of the devaluing of international law and of international legal institutions like the International Court of Justice. That has a significant impact, I would say, for international law more broadly uh, and for all states, Australia, the UK included, that value the rule of law uh, and that set store uh, by being law-abiding themselves. And in that respect, this modern manifestation of anti-Semitism is something uh, that really needs to be tackled head on. Thank you so much, Natasha. We're going to have to leave it there. We could chat about so much more and we will do in the future. Thanks so much.